Welcome everyone and thank you for attending our live demonstration of OSISOFT's Pi system. My name is Tom Trapel and our expert this morning is Ali Arslan, Systems Engineer at OSISOFT. Today's demonstration will take roughly 30 minutes followed by 10 to 15 minutes of Q&A. But before we begin, I just want to mention a few housekeeping notes. This webinar is being recorded and we will be providing the recording and slides after the webinar. You can expect an email from us within a few days. And I want to encourage everyone to submit any questions you may have via the Q&A option on the WebEx digital event platform. If we're not able to get to everyone's question, we will certainly follow up with a response after the demonstration. And with that, I will now hand it off to Ollie to get started with today's demonstration. Ollie, thank you for joining us. Yeah, of course. Like Tom mentioned, I'm a systems engineer. And I'll go through a brief demo of the Pi system. And by no means is this an exhaustive demo, but I'll just highlight certain capabilities and just a general overview. So a little bit about OSSOF, we were founded in 1980, and since then the company has grown quite a bit. Um, and because of that, we have a lot of different customers, and um, those customers generally range from big companies to small companies, um, and we have a pretty powerful footprint in a lot of different industries. And so you can see we have a lot of oil and gas, power, chemicals, metal and mining, pharma, food and beverage customers, and about 65% of global 500 process manufacturing companies use our software. Um, and so you can see over 1,000 of the world's leading power utilities companies use the software, 95% of the global fourth and top 50 oil and gas companies, 400 plus pulp and paper companies, and so on and so forth. Um, and so really, the software is used in a lot of different industries because they all share a, a certain problem, which is they want to be able to view and collect different types of data and make informed decisions on that type of data, and then obviously monitor their real-time processes as they happen and know that those processes are running effectively. And the way the Pi system fits into that is it really is an enterprise-level software that sits kind of on top of all of these different assets. All of these assets will then send data to the Pi system and with that, we can kind of format and enhance um, and provide analytics on top of that data so that you know, we can use the data for stuff like asset health, safety and security, process efficiency. Um, and this is really the reason why a lot of different industries use the Pi system, so that they can make informed decisions on that data. It doesn't matter what type of data it is, but as long as we're able to view and analyze the data, in a format that makes sense, we can make those decisions. And so some of the use, some of the use cases that other companies have done that has led them to save money or get a nice return on their investment. Um, some examples being Microsoft, which is use of facilities and its usage of their data centers, but, and that saved them over $2 million. We have Columbia Pipeline Group, now TransCanada, they saved over 2.8 million from event prevention, um, and this is kind of condition-based maintenance, so really maintenance that happens before the asset goes down. Um, and then you can see the other use cases. And so generally, when we have customers, and whether they're a small company or a large company, an engineer at that company might be working with a turbine. It's not working. You know, he may want to analyze what the problem is. A plant manager would be in charge of multiple processes, and we would want to see data from all of those processes. A maintenance technician would want to know real-time data as it comes in to make sure that everything is running smoothly, and if not, we should go and send a team out to fix it. Um, and then in terms of executive level management, they would want to know what the forecast on productivity is or just, just a general high over level um, overview of how the business is performing. And so all of these people need data, want to utilize data, albeit maybe certain different types of data, they all stem from you know, their processes and how they analyze those processes. And so the Pi system fits in, by, we collect all that data, we kind of send it to what we call the Pi server, right? And this is all the real-time data. And then we add layers on top of that data so that it's actually meaningful to the people who use it. Um, and so we have something called Pi Asset Framework, and then we provide asset analytics, event frames, and notifications. And these are just features that we provide 
which allow our customers to use the data and be proactive in how they're using that data. And then after the data is into the Pi server, we have our visualization tools so you can view the data, um, like Pi Vision, Pi Data Link, Manual Logger, Pi Process Book. I'll go over Pi Vision. And really, these tools are just pulling from the data that's already in the Pi server and showing it to you in real time and also historical data. And then we also provide Pi of access. So there are times when you would want to programmatically access the data that's in the Pi system, and we have tools for you to do that. We provide integrators um, when you want to kind of push that data out of the Pi system into different tools. An example would be something like Esri, which is a mapping overlay product. You may want to overlay that Pi system real-time data on your specific assets on a map. Um, and then we allow you to share the data. So, like I said, you have a lot, a lot of customers have a lot of different types of data, right? And different um, ways they collect that data. Um, and so we see like PLCs and SCADA, which is at the control level. You may have an asset reliability management system, a CDM system, an EMS system. Um, and then you would want, and then certain people would then push that to Excel our planning, planning and scheduling system or learning management system. So you can see it would be difficult for one person to, you know, get data that they that they may not have used before or integrate that data into their workflow if they're not used to it because of all these different types of systems. And I've seen this personally where certain departments and certain companies just don't have access to data that the other departments are using. And that kind of limits them in terms of the analytics they can perform. And so the Pi system comes in and really provide a way for you to standardize and simplify that data collection, right? If everything is being fed into a central system, like an enterprise level system that I mentioned the Pi is, um, then everyone has access to the same system and how they utilize it, utilize it is left to the viewer or the engineer who is going to be doing it. Um, and so, like I mentioned, we collect, we enhance, and we deliver it. The way we collect it is through the use of our interfaces, our connectors, we have the OMAP protocol, which allows you to write applications in OMAP to directly send data to the Pi system now. And again, that's platform agnostic. And then when you send it to the Pi system, we, we provide you with certain features so that you're better able to make use of that data. Um, to the use of Pi as a framework, which provides contextualizations. We have an analysis platform or analysis engine where you can, you know, do analytics on top of that data. We have event frames which allow you to put context around certain events that happen and kind of perform analytics on that. And then we have notifications um, on, on top of that where you can now notify of something as an event that you deem as an exception happens. So, like I mentioned, um, we also have our own visualization tools and then we have integrators and third parties. And so I'll talk about Pi Vision and give you guys a demo. Um, and then we also have Pi Data Link, which I mentioned is just an Excel add-in. And so we allow for you to import the data into Excel. Again, this is live and historical, and sometimes even future data if you've done predictive modeling um, into Excel. And then there, again, you have all the functional capabilities of Excel. Um, so you can slice or format the data. And then I mentioned the Pi integrator here. So Integrators we have available today, with more to come. Um, and so I mentioned Esri, which is really a map of a mapping service, and then you can put real-time data on your assets on the map. Um, we have Microsoft Azure integrator, so if you would like to get that data into like a Azure storage, um, SAP HANA, and then business analytics platform like Tableau and Power BI. And so. Like I mentioned, everything in the Pi system, then we add AF to give you a little bit of what AF is. What AF is, is it just allows for you to provide relationships, meaningful organization around that data. You can see I have a new green database. Under that, I have my Houston plant, and then I may have certain processes associated with that plant, and each of those processes then have um, certain assets that are responsible for that process. And so it allows me, especially as an end user or someone who may not be familiar with the intricacies 
of that process to be able to go in and view all that data um, and really lower the barrier to entry for that data. And so, like I said, we can really combine a lot of different tools in the app. So you have your time series data, right? And this may be like a reactor's temperature or flow rate. And then you may have certain metadata that isn't real time, uh, but will provide context around that attribute. So in terms of like their model, their manufacturer. And then I may obviously have external data, right? There may be data living in SQL databases or graphs or Excel or design documents. Um, they may want to link to that asset so that if someone was to see this, it may be useful to them. Um, and then obviously within AF, we provide an analytics platform. This is where you can calculate efficiency, the key performance indicators, do some basic if and conditional um, branching uh, to really format the data however you would want it. And then I mentioned event frames. Um, so you want to put context around that, right? Generate an event frame for the reactor. Temperature goes over a certain thing, you know, um, because that would be a, a cause for worry. And then we provide notifications. So I may want to get a notification, maybe in the form of an email or a text that lets me know that, hey, this process has deviated from its, from its expected value, um, and I may want to take a look at that now. And so this is just our analytics engine. You can see that um, we set up some pretty basic conditionals, um, and that allows us to format the data and kind of get the value that we want. This is something that maybe an engineer would would have to do in like a spreadsheet or something, but really if you just standardize it, then I can take this and I can, you know, push it out to all my assets um, and really see what the really important KPIs are. And like I mentioned, we talked about event frames, right? In, in terms of this, I may want to templatize the efficiency of a pump or something and say, okay, um, if the pump efficiency goes under this limit, right, something's happening, generate an event frame. And every time it does this, it will generate an event frame. And then maybe like a year down the line, I may want to say, okay, let's, why? let's take all these pumps that I have and all these event frames for all these pumps that I've had and maybe do some kind of analytics on top of it to see if there was something that was, some, that was a common factor or is one pump consistently having an issue with this part and kind of tease apart those those relationships so that I can see why my pump might be underperforming. And again, this is all automatically generated for you, right? Um, and after that, really, it's up to you to see how you want to use it. And so with that, I can show you a demo of high vision. And so for the first one, we have the R facilities demo on the SLTC, the San Leander Tech Campus, which is the building for our headquarters. And I can see that as a general overview, I've made a dashboard, and I'm monitoring some key systems. So for our building, we have something called view glass, which kind of tints the windows of the building to block sun, to block the sun. Then we have a number of VAV alarm overview, and the VAVs are variable air volume controllers which are responsible for heating and cooling the building. Um, and then I have my building KPI, really the average energy usage of the building on a monthly basis. Um, and then some other alarms and dashboards I've set up that might be useful for certain people. And so if I take a look at the VAV alarms on the fifth floor, I can drill down and it brings me to the floor map for the fifth floor. And then here I can see all of the different VAVs that are responsible for heating certain section of the floor. And I can see the status of the VAV, um, see which ones are heating, which ones are cooling, which ones are off. Um, and obviously, I have monitors at certain, certain set points for each of these locations in the building. And I may want to see, OK, uh, is there an event going on where I have a set point and it's been cooling for a while, but it's not able to reach that set point, right? And, and there are. On the bottom there, on the bottom here, I do have some VAV alarm. And I can drill down and see, okay, for this VAV, um, the temperature differential is too high. Um, and I may want to take a look at, okay, the occupied set point is this, 
right? The current temperature is this. If it's cooling, um, then why is it too high? And we want to generate these events and see over the even now and over the long term why this EAV might not have been functioning. As expected. And then I can take a look at certain building KPIs. And these are just really useful for any building in terms of energy consumption, right? Like for today, I'm consuming 2.3 kilowatt hours. Um, I have some analytics set up and that tells me that okay, like this is down from 23% last year, which is good, right? Just a general overview for the weather because that affects building energy usage, um, the power factor I'm using, the building climate for a kilowatt usage on a daily basis, you can see for the last five days, you know, the day three was pretty high. I may want to take a look at that. Again, I have just general gas and longer demand. Just a high level overview. Same with intensity. Like, are there certain parts of the building that are using more energy and less, efficient, and less energy? And I may want to take a look at that. And then for energy management, right, I can monitor power demand. Um, what is it currently? What is the value? How much am I paying? Right? Um, what is the estimated energy total? And where's the actual, and are we in line with that, right? Generally, energy usage of a building should be consistent year over year, right? If we're not making any changes, any big changes to the building. And so we can put that in PyVision, we can do a model of energy usage on a daily basis and compare it with the current day to see if it's behaving as expected, right? If every Monday I'm using the same energy and one Monday I be a huge spike for energy, what's going on? These are relationships which should be easy to see, um, and we allow that in high, especially in high vision, for you to see, okay, is everything running as expected or not? And if not, what are the steps that we can take to get it back to expected? And again, we have economics, and, right? And the high vision is good at integrating stuff, but it makes sense that now that we have the energy usage, the uh, total, the running total, as well as the, the persistence now energy usage. Um, we integrate that with the energy bill to see how much are we going to pay this month, right? Um, and are we on track? Is this within budget? Um, are there ways that we can improve this? Um, is, is a certain charge too high? You can see here that I'm calculating the demand charge at peak hours and non-peak hours and see like how much money am I using um, for each? Does that make sense to me? And so this would be a nice example of being aware and proactive about the uh, costs that are associated with the building. Instead of being reactive and getting a bill every month, I can see, okay, this is how much I expect. Does it make sense? Um, yeah. And then, like I mentioned, I can take a look at each VAV individually, which are the actual controllers responsible for heating or cooling during section of the building. And I can see the actual air flow going through, how much the dampener is open. This might be useful for like an engineer who's in charge of the building. Um, and we saw that we had we had simultaneous heating and cooling. I may want to know like what is going on with the specific DAV, right? If it's not able to cool the building or heat the building at that certain section for a long time, you know, it might be that the dampener is closed. And so this just provides me with a nice overview of where I expect it, where I expect to be functioning at one level. And yeah, like I said, I can do analytics on top of this, right? Um, I can see, like I mentioned, if there's simultaneous heating and cooling, it may not be efficient for the building, because I don't want to be heating one part of the building and cooling another part of the building. Obviously, there's going to be cost flow and that's just not efficient. And so I can do analytics in, in AF and see them in high vision, you can see that floors two, three, and four are in fact heating and cooling. At the same time, this is stuff that I may want to look at, right? Um, and I can see, okay, well, like if I go to floor two, right, are there any VAVs that are heating? Well, there are, you know, and like you want to take a look at that and see, oh, is it a set point of this something with the VAV? So, it allows us to monitor the building both at, an, at a high level and at a more granular level. Um, let's see how it's going. 
And then we have one for an energy generation company in terms of fleet, in terms of wind turbines. And so you can see that for my total wind uh, wind farm, I, for my wind company, I have two wind farms called a Buffalo Wind Farm, Black Mesa Wind Farm, and Black Wolf Wind Farm. And I can see the revenue for each, just overall metrics um, for my company. And then I may want to drill down and see, okay, for Big Buffalo Wind Farm. How is that wind farm doing? Is it performing as expected? Um, where is the average power at an overview level? Where is the wind speed? Does that make sense, right? Are there any underperforming wind turbines? Um, if there are, I can take a look right now. Wind, so I'll go to the Black Mesa wind farm. See if there are any underperforming wind turbines. Okay, so I see that in this wind farm there is an underperforming wind turbine. I can go down, take a look at the each individual wind wind turbine, see how it's behaving. Right, I I have a power curve for that wind farm. Whether I do this from off the standard power curve or from something like a, a machine learning platform, which is able to Say, okay, for all this given data points for the last year or two years, this is the power this specific wind turbine should be generating at this wind speed. And I can feed that back into Pi and kind of overlay that on top of my actual wind power and see if the wind turbine is performing while at a given speed. And so you can see right now something is going on with this, right? It could be a curtailment event. I can have that uh, this generator. An event frame around that curtailment event and analyze it from there. I can go to the actual wind turbine semantics um, in terms of like the metadata for the manufacturer, take a look at all of the different things in the night cell, like is the night cell facing the correct direction, in case the generator, um, heating or cooling, is everything running fine? Is there an overheat alarm? Is it operating at a good efficiency? Clearly it's not, like we saw. Yeah, this wind turbine wasn't generating active power that we're supposed to. Um, and then we can see some of the reasons why. And I can see that some events have been generated, and specifically one of the event frames, um, the high wind turbine temperature, says, OK, like something is going on. Like it's overheating. This is something I don't want to look at, right? And then I can acknowledge it from here, let the other process engineers know that, hey, I'm taking a look at this. I can acknowledge this event frame and say, you know, I got this, or I'll send the technician out. And then everyone's able to see that and know that it's been taken care of. And then we have a refinery. Um, this is downstream oil and gas, and you can see that I have about five or six refineries in my Petrolux refining company. I can see an overview in terms of how much oil is being produced, how each refinery is being utilized. And I can drill down into each individual refinery. Houston, let's take a look. You can see that I see some overall KPIs for the refinery, right? I have my feed and my yield, and kind of I'm comparing them with the plan and the actual, make sure everything is running fine and are we meeting the target, are we not meeting the target? And how is the cracking unit, the catalytic cracking unit doing, right, in terms of operation and pricing, right? I can see that I'm a little bit down. This is something I don't want to look at. And then I don't want to compare that with the other refineries here and see on a seven day basis how are they comparing to each other. And then within that refinery, I have different processes. So I may want to monitor those individual processes, make sure that all of those are working well. If they're not, right, like I would want to take a look. But in terms of like a manager, I would want to see this dashboard and see, okay, everything looks good. It's what I expect, you know, equipment status. My, this is something I don't want to check or my, my engineers know. And then obviously for a refinery, it's nice to have an overview of the actual process and the real-time data from that process. So I just want to highlight that all of this data is real-time for this process, right? This is the actual temperature on this vessel. This is the actual flow rate um, of the oil going into this. And this will change as that rate changes. And this might be useful for an engineer who's monitoring the process, right? And then I have a couple KPIs to let me know how the process is doing at a glance. And obviously, I can do it down. 
And so these are all the metrics that might be useful for like an oil engineer or a process engineer. Um, and this is really driven by the engineers to, to see and make meaningful dashboards that make sense but are also utilized so that they don't have more work to do. And I don't want to take a look at feed quality for all of the different ones, right? We talk about equipment. I don't want to take a look at the equipment in the refinery. I can see that the pump in our Houston refinery um, is having some issues, right? So I can drill down into it. And again, I can take a look at the actual pump um, and see what, what's going on. And in this case, the RPM of the pump you know, might be too high. That might be causing issues. And as a maintenance engineer, right, I may want to know why, and so I can link maybe a troubleshooting checklist in high vision. Okay, like generally when the pump is high, um, we expect these things to be happening. Are these things happening? And then we can have a process in place to deal with that. And so all of these different dashboards, really, for all of these different companies, right away for engineers, management, really anyone who would be interested in the data to easily look at the data and kind of make meaningful conclusions from that. With that, I think we're done. Thank you, Ali. At this moment, I will uh, bring it to our audience for Q&A. If you do happen to have any questions for Ali regarding the demonstration, please place them in the Q&A option on the WebEx digital event platform. Ali, while we we're waiting for questions to come in, um, could you maybe probably provide some examples of what some what you hear from customers or prospects when you go on site? Yeah. So generally speaking, when customers are interested in purchasing the Pi system, they have a specific project that they want to be able to kind of bring to fruition and get value out of it, right? Um, for an airport that may be marketed like a facility. Energy usage for like a baseball game that may be monitoring the energy usage again, or like an oil and gas that may be monitoring their the oil and gas processes, or like I mentioned, it really is dependent on like what specific project they want to carry out, and then how does the system fit into that project, right? But at the end of the day, it really is most people can benefit from being able to view all of their data in a centralized platform, and then being able to perform analytics on top of that. So generally, instead of guessing or being reactive, customers now are looking to be more proactive in terms of all of their processes. Um, so kind of they can eliminate unneeded or wasteful either avenues of, of costs or uh, downtime and stuff like that. Thank you, Ali. That's, that's very helpful. All right, our first question. The um, upper section of vision where the home or KPI is located, is that like part of Pi Vision or is that a complement complementary feature? Yeah, so in terms of like going through and um, building out this stuff, a lot of this is native to vision. Certain stuff, if it's not native to vision, we provide an extensibility platform. So we allow you to make custom symbols um, that then you can then directly view in Pi Vision and then use those symbols. And a lot of customers do tend to do that, especially if they're writing back to the Pi system. Um, they'll use custom symbols and, and have their own symbols. But also we have a library of symbols that you can just kind of use. You can see here. Um, we also, just as a point, we have a GitHub page where customers have also built out a lot of symbols that you can go go in, download yourself, and then import into your own Pi Vision. Excellent. Thank you. Um, our next one, it, this is not exactly a question about the demonstration, but this uh, participant wants to know if you could share anything about the, the future vision for integrating with third-party analytics or machine learning or AI platforms after the discontinuing, discontinuation of integration with like the MATLAB production service. Yeah. So in terms of like integration with those third-party platforms, this is where our integrator suite comes into play. Right, you can export the data to those platforms. And personally, I have seen customers like France Canada export that data to something like a machine learning, like Azure machine learning or a machine learning platform with the use of the integrator, do the analytics there, and then write that data back into Pi for real time predictive forecasting. Um, in terms of uh, 
map lab integration. I think we'll have announcements coming up, and I'll go into more details. But this is something that we are aware of. But the product managers themselves will tell you more. But when it's time to release it. Thank you. Are there templates available for renewable facilities so that it's easy to upload wind turbine points or inverter points easily into a common format? This um, attendee, they deal with multiple vendors, HMIs, that have various forms of point lists that are not in a standard format. Yeah, so we have, like I mentioned, over 300 some interfaces and ways and different ways for you to get that data into the pod. And yeah, generally a lot of our different customers have different types of and and assets or things that aren't standardized. And we have interfaces or ways to access that data, get it into Pi, standardize it to the use of AF and templates, and then scale that to each individual. Um, you know, bring turbine or really any process. Thank you. Our next question, are you able to show the ways that companies use the PI system for quality tracking where it's SPC capabilities? Yeah, so in terms of quality insurance, like event frames are really useful for that. That's something I mentioned, right? Where we have either certain processes that may go out of deviation, and then you may want to track that, or we have certain badges, and we're doing, we're making sure that the badge is following standards Right, and so event frames are used both for quality tracking and for for making sure the process is running at that optimal level. Great. All right, we have one more question here. Can you talk a little more in detail about how data is imported into PyVision, also for making dashboards? Is there a dashboard builder? Yeah. So I just want to highlight that data isn't being imported to PyVision, because PyVision is really just a visualization platform, really um, a web application that's reading data from the Py server. Um, so there's no real need to import actually. If, if we're working within our native visualization tool, you know, this includes like PyVision, Pro Data Link. Um, the data is being read on a live basis from the Py server. In terms of like this dashboard builder, PyVision is essentially a dashboard. Builder. We provide you with tools to be able to build these dashboards. Um, and most of these are, like I said, native dashboards that have been built through the use of PyVision because the data is already in there, right? All I have to do is drag and drop these things onto the display for me to see. And if data is, if that specific piece of data isn't there, then I can just go back into AF and do analytics, right? Like if I want to do a revenue analytic on my big Buffalo wind farm, all I need to do is kind of roll that up from the wind turbine, calculate the NAS, and then again, drag and drop down. Thank you. Let's just see if we have any more questions from the audience. All right, if there are no further questions, I'd like to thank everyone for attending today's demonstration. If you do happen to have additional questions following this record, this demonstration, please feel free to reach out to us from one of the follow-up emails we send out after the webinar. Once again, thank you for attending our OSI Soft Pi system demonstration, and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Ali, thank you very much for joining us once again. Mm -hmm.